Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about theater sub-objectives. We've had a lot of experience in our multi-channel room with four 13 and a half inch subs. And then we have another smaller uh, home theater room that I set up because I had a lot of gears <laughs> sitting around, which drives me crazy, you know, to see amplifiers and speakers and cables and stuff sitting around and not being used. So I decided to set it up in my room and do a little experimenting with, with the low frequency part of it as always, you know, that's our main emphasis with our carbon technology. Because as you know, from our past videos, you, you gotta get the low end right in the room. And what causes the energy? It's the low frequency drivers. It's the subwoofers that produce the energy. And it's such a critical combination of gear and room the synergy between gear and room that we need to consider. So, you know, they have a difficult task, these drivers. If you think about it, they have to, you know, duplicate this, the low frequency pressure. They have to uh, be fast enough to be believable. You know, um, just throwing something into a room that produces low frequency energy without the proper speed to it, uh, you, you can hear it right away, and you can hear it in, in the difference between a higher quality woofer and a lower quality driver. You, you can hear the difference right away. It's almost as great as the resolution difference between a smaller diameter mid-range driver and a larger diameter driver. So, sub speed's critical. You know, you gotta have a fast response. You gotta create energy quickly uh, to be believable and to be realistic. And then just as important, once that energy is created, you got to have the proper room treatment to manage this energy. So that's really good balance to have to get the attack and the decay and the realism in it. You know, in our large uh, multiple channel room, you can actually feel a 30 cycle wave oscillating through the room. So that's real. You know, that adds to the realism because we have lots of management technology in that room. So smaller diameter drivers are faster. I mean, it's just physics, right? The goal of any subwoofer drivers is try to get a large diameter driver to move as quickly as a small one. Well, that's pretty hard to do. So there's a lot of temps and there's a lot of electronics involved in order to do that. But the goal is to get the, the larger driver to move as fast as as the uh, smaller driver. Now the larger driver is going to produce more gain or more output into the room. Difference between a 10 and 12 inch driver is about 2 dB output. So it's substantial, especially in small rooms, especially in, in rooms where you don't have any uh, room treatment for low frequency energy, which I'll never understand. Okay, So the room treatment must hold the fundamental, that's the attack, and allow for the harmonic decay. I use the example of opening the door for someone. You know, you open the door for uh, the fundamental, so to speak, and, and let the harmonic go through. That's the goal. So you want to get the fundamental out of the way so it's not mud and soup, because most of this low frequency energy I hear in rooms is, is mud and soup. I was in a room the other day, two 15-inch uh, drivers and two 18-inch drivers. It sounded like a mess. There was no room treatment. It, it was so much energy in the room, you couldn't, I couldn't separate 40 from 50 cycles. I couldn't separate 50 from 60 cycles. So it's just a mess. And of course the client's very proud of the quantity. And he said, well, what do you think? And I said, well, lots of energy, but no quality. And he, of course, you know, he's upset. Well, welcome to life. You know, that's the way things go. So if you ask me my opinion, I'm going to base my opinion on my experience. And I have a lot of experience, years and years of it. So if you don't want the truth, don't ask. It's pretty simple. If your feelings are fragile enough that you can't take constructive criticism, I don't know what to say to that. So room treatment must hold the fundamental law for the money. So you got to have a, a combination of speed in the driver, output in the driver, a balance. So what I thought, in our smaller room, we, we do a, a small driver. So we've got an 8-inch driver and a 12-inch driver, and we stacked them on top of each other. 
And I haven't had a lot of time to listen to it, but I wanted to do this video just for my initial uh, uh, impressions of, of what I'm hearing. And it seems to be a nice balance. We got speed, because the 8-inch driver is very fast. And then the 12-inch driver, not so fast, but more output. So it's a nice balance between speed and output. Now, that doesn't negate the fact that you still have to treat the room for low-frequency management. But I think this combination of 8 and 10s, 8 and 12s, 10s and 15s, we're going to try different combinations throughout the year, and we'll report back to you. But initially, this seems to be kind of a good balance. So you guys out there that are setting up home theater rooms, give this combination some consideration. Driver diameter, speed, and room treatment. It's all a balancing act. Theater sub-objectives. I hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions, and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum, and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.